Hello everyone, we have quite a chore in front of us. This is video one of six, uh, which you're going to be watching are the various videos that I have broken down from a gallery reading that I and some of my team members attended back in December, 2023. I am recording this on December 24th, 2023, Christmas Eve. And this is how I spend my Christmas Eve. <laughs> it's okay. It's got to be done. Um, if This is probably the first video you should watch because it has more of the content in it as far as what you're about to see. This is a gallery reading of about 35 people, almost all of them female. When I bought the ticket, purchased the ticket for this event, I uh, the screen said that there were 50 tickets available. Um, that was like a day or so before the event. So I thought, how are you gonna how are you gonna sell out 50 tickets? Well, by the time I actually purchased the ticket, there was 47 tickets available. So I believe that a lot of the the people who are attending were gifted the ticket either by um, Suzanne or um, Cheryl or by, you know, as some kind of favor or, you know, buy something, get one free. I don't know how, but I they managed to sell that many tickets that quickly. Mm, I'm not so sure about that, but we'll see. Um, there are some mentions of gifting tickets mentioned. Suzanne will mention that. Um, so, uh, getting people there is all it's about, right? So there's about 35 women here and I have blurred most of them and removed their screen, their names. The, this is, I find these videos very interesting because it's not what you traditionally see. And this is over the last few months is something I've been doing more and more of is analyzing the videos, the readings or audio of people who don't necessarily think that this is going to be on a TV show or or whatnot. They they think it's probably going to be kept between 100 or so people, I guess. Um, the, the mediums that you see on TV, Tyler Henry, uh, Teresa Caputo, Sylvia Brown, um, John Edward, it's a different kind of world because those edits, those videos are heavily edited and they're selected and uh, for, for being, you know, the better of the readings. But what I'm going to show you today, and you'll find a lot of this on my channel, are readings that were recorded that we attended by more personal readings as far as, um, how do I say this, more more one-on-one -on -one kind of readings. And I like to do gallery readings where we show video after video after video after video because it really helps you pick out the style of the medium, the way they interact with their team, the way they interact with each other, other mediums, and the way they interact with their audience. There's a, it's a lot of uh, camaraderie and there's a lot of this feeling of being on a team together um, inner kind of an entertainment well, but of course this really is an entertainment and I think that'll be very clear to see as you as you watch some of these videos what you're going to see is cold reading lots and lots of cold reading keeping in mind that the medium can see the person they're reading and you're going to see a blurred image with some movement, so you might be able to tell. But you, but what's going on is they're they're doing a lot of uh, body language. Um, even if they don't think they're giving off body language, they're giving off a lot of body language, and that helps the medium when they're cold reading to be able to know if they're on the right track to continue or to um, you know change course. Suzanne is going to do something very strange. I've never seen a medium do this before where she's pulling up multiple people and getting them all confused with each other. And I think it's covering her as far as um, the absurdity of what she's saying in the mixtures. And she's it's, it's like she's just purely making up stuff. That's really interesting. 
Cheryl Murphy is a student of Ty Thomas John. Um, she does not hot read like Thomas John does. She cold reads. And a lot of people who've watched her videos believe, as I do, that she's very cold. She comes across clinical and professional, but yet very, not very engaged and sympathetic. And that's, that's her style. So it, it's, that has nothing to do with mediumship. But I think that what you'll see is that it's, it's pure cold reading and it's not well done, but you be the judge of that. Please leave your comments in the, in the chat. So I'll remind you that the people who are sitters in these events are victims. They are, um, some of them, most of them are willingly here and they um, probably willfully ignorant of mediumship and the tricks. That does not mean that they should be preyed upon. They're being manipulated. This is not entertainment and it's not helpful. Um, if they really, some people are stuck in a um, extreme grief cycle and you, you'll you be able to tell which ones are which. And they are in need probably of serious licensed therapy. And what they're getting from these mediums is not um, serious or licensed or therapy. This is not helping anyone um, except the mediums. So um, if you like this kind of content, please make sure you like and share and, and join the community by commenting. Please do um, um, send me, if you want, other video or audio that you've collected from readings you've had in the past. If you want me to keep them private, I can do that. I can blur things. I can change voices. I can make sure nobody's mentioned. But it's it's really an interesting look to get these uh, these videos and audio of readings that wouldn't normally be something that would hit a TV show kind of thing. So uh, let's get right into it. What we're going to start off with and these may not be in the right order because the way I created them took me all day. The first one that we're going to see, I believe, is going to be, let's see, which one was it? And uh, I just feel all of your loved ones here, God. Yeah, I think we're going to start with this one. This is Cheryl, who's going to be doing a reading of a man who's sitting in a car. And it's quite interesting. Now, remember that these are stories that these um, psychics sometimes, these people have done thousands of readings, okay? So if they come off quick, glib, um, in and like with tropes or whatever, it's probably because that's they've just done so many readings. Very glib, very fast, very... Um, I don't know, almost like they're not even really thinking about what they're saying. Our friend Janice Boynton, who is the person who's an expert on facilitated communication, which has a lot in common with the psychic world. Um, she says that what it appears to when she watches these cold readers is somebody is trying, they, they've tried to create a story. They've made a like something's happened in their life or they've got this thought about something and then they start, they spit it out and then they just continue it. Like, okay, for example, there was this chicken. I saw this chicken and his name was Fred and it was, it was, it was pecking in the ground and it was, it was going around and it was pecking in the ground. And all of a sudden this hawk swooped in and it, it was trying to pick up the chicken, but it was too heavy and it would keep, okay. That's just a story I've made up. Maybe it's something out of my imagination or something I saw on TV or a book or something or a dream I had. And when you put it out there, sometimes it, it when you have a motivated sitter, which these people, all of them are, they're all motivated to get a reading. They're willing to suspend judgment, to, to make things work. They're, they're going to try to make this happen. So when you have people like that who are willing to kind of, you know, give you the benefit of the doubt of what you're saying, they'll make it work. 
that chicken will be and the chicken and the hawk will end up becoming their boss at work and <laughs> or it'll be you know some of their children who are working and they've got a bully at school or maybe it's going to have something to do with the harvest you make it fit it's a story and and you 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 do what you can with it so you'll see a lot of that in here as well um so as I said, we're going to see Cheryl and a man in a car. Use your, get your notes out because this is going to be something that you're going to want to um, take notes on and we'll go through it together at the end, okay? And uh, I just feel all of your loved ones here, guys. So please, I mean, there's just so much love in the room tonight, but um, I do feel like I have an elderly man with me and I do feel, and I don't know why I got earlier, I got Band-Aids. Like, I don't know if someone owns Band-Aids, if they run a, a, a company. I got this person wearing Band-Aids all the time. And like, I don't know if you used to sign them or that would mean something to you, but I felt it around a male feel a male person i want to know if someone can understand band-aids to start with i'm just going to give it all to you okay and then i felt an older gentleman coming in and he's talking to me about bowling and fixing things i'm not and i feel like nancy is a name that you would recognize and i feel like his sister is here so I probably working with a brother, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to feel him uh, a little bit more strongly. I'm asking him to come in. I do feel a bowling is a big deal. I don't know why I keep hearing this. And then uh, can anyone understand that? And you can take away the name Nancy because that may come through more later, uh, later with more information. But there's a brother here. I do there's feel a guy. There's a guy, Jim, that has his hand up. Oh, hi. Uh, can thank you right. for mentioning that. I don't see both screens. I know uh, I, that's why I, I have thanks. to help each other. You gotta thanks, help each other Suzanne. out here because it's <laughs> I <clears throat> I don't understand the Nancy right off uh -huh. the bat. Well, I have a neighbor named Nancy, but bowling was very important to my father. To a father. Do you oh. understand oh. the band-aids, Jim? I don't know why I got uh. band-aids so much. I don't know what that reference means at this moment. If you can't, that's fine. Yeah, not off the, not off the top yeah. of my head. May I work with you though, Jim? Uh, so sure. it's more of a father than a. Um... But don't you have a brother, Jim? Do you have a brother? I do. Okay, thank you. Um, is there something about you guys working together on something right now on a project, or is he coming over for the holidays? It's something about the two of you working together on a project. I'm not working on a project with a brother, but I do have a brother who left town to be with his son for the holiday, okay. which is unusual. Okay. I'm still going to work with you because there's also a little boy, too, in this whole picture. So I, want, I do want to stay with you, Jim. So this gentleman that passed that went bowling a lot because he kind of kept pushing me towards bowling. And I went right from a, the Band-Aids and a little boy up to a gentleman who's bowling. So maybe he's trying to paint a picture for me. Bowling, so maybe and uh, well, would you paint a picture go ahead, for me? Jim. My, my father was, bowling was very, very important to him. Mm -hmm. And I have four brothers. And so he raised us bowling. Oh, mm -hmm. how amazing. And I'm in a bowling league now with oh. my, oh, the project. My older brother and I are in a bowling league together. Okay. And we bowl on today, Wednesdays. Oh, perfect. So there you go. Uh, and you so, stood bowling up to see us, Jim? How could you have done that? Yeah. Are you going to go bowling <laughs> after this, Jim, or what? It's busy life this time of year. <laughs> well, we're honored. We're certainly honored. Um, so I just feel like he's, so you're going to bowl after this. Is that right or something? Are you going after yes. this? Because I feel yes. like, oh, you're going to bowl a strike and your dad's going to be there. And I feel like your dad kind of coming alive now and being so bubbly. And and what a what a what a graceful man is what I want to say. If you would understand that. I do feel yes. a big smile, happier than ever. But I also felt him passing from an illness, too. Would you understand that, please? I uh, passed from a heart attack. Very good. That's fine. Uh, it felt like uh, he passed from an illness. I'm just going to go ahead and take that for now because I also felt heart attack and suddenly, but I'm still going to appreciate that what you're saying. There's something about the band-aids and the little boy. I feel like uh, I just want to put still put that out there for you. I'm going to I'm going to ask him to bring more information through. 
Um, but I want to say that um, there's something about your father wanting to come through and talk about the holidays and being together. And this would be a special time of the year for you. Do you understand that? Yeah. And do you understand also, Jim, that uh, your dad was not only an exceptional boulder, boulder but I feel like uh, uh, trophies or awards with him? Yeah. And would you also understand that you have his bowling ball? I do not. My brother one, may. One of your brothers do. That's fine. Yeah. Also, do you have? did your father have a brother passed away? Because I feel another gentleman in spirit, please. He did. Who kind of wants to come in and be part of the conversation, you know? Oh. And I feel, um, I feel a real closeness with this gentleman. I even want to call him part of the family. So this would be an uncle. You can understand that for uncle, please? Yes. Um, I do. I feel this gentleman to be very passionate or to be a very uh, trustworthy person or stepping in to help you. Now, uh, your father talks to me about buying a house. Would you understand that? Or if someone either recently has bought a house or getting ready to um, purchase real estate property, this feeling? I would have to check that. I'm, I'm not the top of my head. I don't know. Uh, would you please check on that? Because I do feel your father handing me a pair of keys, but I don't believe they're car keys. I believe they're more, uh, you know, to a home, to a home or to a property. Uh, so your father's coming through, and I want to tell you, not only is he talking about his health, but he's talking about your health and taking care of your health. But I feel like this is everybody's health, right? He's talking about the family health. So if your dad passed from a heart, as you say, I feel like in that way, he's giving me the message to talk about um, your health and your brother's health also, okay? Okay. Also, I want to say, God, is your birth date, is there a, a reason to celebrate also right around now, like the month of January? Uh, my birthday is in January. So okay, is my mother's. Very, very <laughs> good. I just want to say, uh, you know, let the celebrations begin, please. And uh, is mom still with us? Yes. Okay. And there's something about, um, I, I don't know, bringing her <clears throat> closer or letting her, letting her, um, I don't know, letting her see you bowl or something. It's about bringing her more into the family and, and sharing all of your celebrations with her. Also, I do feel, just to leave you a message, I do feel your father saying he was very happy and he lived, he lived, he lived a very happy life. I do feel it to be successful. And I know that family is first for your father. And it's almost like your dad worked really hard for everything he had. Uh, but he would say he never would jump the gun or he never put the cart before the horse. He does feel yeah. to be a very patient man, but very diligent in what he did. Do you understand that? In yes. some way you took his, uh, you took those qualities. And I wanna say thank you for taking care of his, of his wife, okay? Thanks for taking care of your mom. Oh also, yeah, that's true. I'm going to I'm going to leave you with that, Jim. And oh, thank, thank you. you for helping me with that reading. Thank you for uh, connecting me with the bowling. That is big and have a great game this afternoon. Oh, I have thank one, you. one thing I, I want to add to this. And when yes, I, when, please, and when I say this out loud, Jim is going to exactly know. And I only know this because my sister was a bowler. You're forever having band-aids on your hands. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah, they'll put them on their thumbs when they bowl. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're always having band-aids on your face. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Suzanne. <laughs> it's okay. You know, you got to, I mean, like I've said, like, like, I mean, think about it. It's real obvious that people use their fingers and they, they for, you know, forever doing things to them while you bowl. I love I'm it. not a bowler, but my sister was a bowler. As a matter of fact, she was in major leagues. So wow. she, was, oh, there she, you go. When she was younger. So I always remember, you know, the band-aids on the hands. So I'm just, just, just saying, just my, my, my. Just saying. My, just just saying my 20 seconds <laughs> and yeah, that's okay okay thanks Very Jim. Cool. thank you thank Susan. you thank you okay, okay Susan, i'm gonna hand it you back okay so i have okay what do you guys think of that please comments comments in the uh comment box please i made notes so i hope that you guys made notes also because you're going to see and hear things that I didn't see in here. And that's just the way we do it. We have to do this kind of as a team. All right. So she felt Cheryl felt a lot of love in the room. There was an elderly man who owns band-aids or does somebody own band-aids? Somebody owns band-aids. Somebody signs band-aids. 
I wrote that down. Somebody has a company that sells Band-Aids or manufactures Band-Aids. Um, Nancy, an older man whose brother is here. So she was aiming for somebody with the name Nancy and whose brother was on the call and something with Band-Aids. So here comes Jim. Oh, bowling. Bowling, very important. Okay, so um, how do I say this? Bowling is very popular, especially in certain parts of the United States. It is a huge, huge deal. Um, bowling leagues, bowling practice, bowling playing, bowling, 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 bowling. It is a big, big uh, event. Bowling leagues, family events, uh, bowling. <laughs> it's very big. So um, <laughs> I don't think, now that I listen to it again, that Cheryl had put together bowling and Band-Aids together. When Jim leaves this call, when he goes to his bowling practice today, he's going to say, you're not going to believe this, but I had a reading by a medium today while I was sitting in the car getting ready to go to bowling practice. And she knew, she got dad. And dad said that uh, we all need, we need you and I, he, okay, Jim's going to tell this to his brother that he's going to go bowling with. And he's going to say, Jim, uh, brother, who's unnamed, dad came through in this medium reading today. I just had, I'm sitting in the car and the medium knew that he, he bowling was just his life. He just bowling. And then she even knew about how he, how he used to put band-aids on his fingers and dad said that you and I need to take care of our health. We really got to watch out for our health and that uh, we're, we need to get mom more involved in the bowling stuff because dad really wants to have mom more involved watching his bowl, coming to see his bowl and um, that kind of thing. And that we need to have a really, really important birthday coming up in January. You know, my birthday and mom's birthday is going to be here in January. So she, so dad said to make sure that he's celebrating that and he's with us and that he was a hard worker and um, who's buying a house, you know, uh, what's this about buying a house? Because uh, the medium said that dad could see keys for a property or a house and something, something about one of us is buying a house. Okay. So you, that's what Jim is going to tell his brother. You know it and I know it, but is that what really happened? Because that's not what really happened. You, we could, we have the benefit of going back and looking at the video again if we wanted to and re-listening to it. Whereas Jim is sitting in a car listening to this. He's not recording this. He's not taking notes. He's just listening. And so as it washes over you, all this information, which is coming very fast, and it's very emotional because he thinks he's speaking to his dead father, it, it, it hits you. And it's hard to remember all the details and it's hard to remember all the words and how they were said in the way they were said. So give this guy a little bit of a break, right? This is what's going on. Um, Cheryl is throwing out to 35 people something about an elderly man who likes to bowl. And there's a Nancy and there's Band-Aids. And Jim hits on the bowling part of it and an older man. And then Cheryl has working with Jim. And as she's just saying more things, she's course correcting. Like he says, I don't know about Nancy. She says, that's fine. Maybe they'll, we'll figure it out later. So she goes a different path. And then she was looking for a brother to be in the audience. Well, it wasn't a brother. Jim has a father. And then, so she course corrects again. And then she says, you must have a brother. He says, yes, I have a brother. And what is this you're doing with your brother? What kind of project are you doing with your brother? That's kind of a reach that the project I wrote down here, they're working on a project together or coming over for the holidays. I'm not sure what that has to do with a project. And the motivated sitter, Jim, who's trying very hard to make sense of everything, says, ah, what you must be talking about is my brother, my older brother and I, in other words, there's more brothers than, than 
the two mentioned, my older brother and I are in a bowling league. And that must be what you're talking about or what dad's talking about. So he made sense of it and it doesn't really have anything to do with it, right? Okay. And the other brother is out visiting his son for the holidays, which is unusual. And Cheryl says, oh yeah, there's a little boy in this. And uh, I want to talk about a, a little boy who's involved in this somewhere. So possibly she's saying that because um, Jim's brother is gone away for the holidays to visit his son. So she might've gotten a little confused. I'm sure his son is probably an adult, but maybe there's a grandchild. I don't know. But the little boy never enters into it again. Nancy never enters into it again. Um, and, and that's pretty much it. So she gets a lot of other things odd. Dad passed from an illness. And he Jim says, well, he had a heart attack. She goes, oh, that's all right. That, as if that is a long lingering illness. Not quite the same thing, right? Okay. Uh, Dad wants to talk about the holidays. Well, she's just saying that. It doesn't mean dad is really talking about the holidays. That's not a hit or anything. And he's a huge bowler, bowls all the time. So the idea that there would be awards is not odd at all. And she mentioned something about the awards. And even Jim's like, well, yeah. And he, she says, he wants to talk about the holidays and how much you enjoyed him. And Jim's, yeah, okay. You have his bowling ball. Actually, he does not have his bowling ball. But because Jim's motivated, he's, well, I'll have to ask my brother. Maybe my brother has it. I mean, it's not like you're going to throw away dad's bowling ball, right? So it's going to go somewhere. When my dad um, died and we were cleaning everything out, he left a bowling ball and it was so heavy. There was no way anybody in our household could have ever used this bowling ball. And I didn't want to have his bowling ball around. I mean, I mean, you can only hang on to so much of your family's um, belongings. So what I did is I took the bowling ball to our local bowling alley and I left it there. And it might still be there for all I know. I figured they could use it. It wouldn't be heavy for, you know, around my house. But that's where it went. Because, um, of course, my dad and his brother did bowl. It was a thing. They're from Ohio. People in Ohio did a lot of bowling. Apparently, it's a big deal all over the place. And we we went bowling, too, as, as teenagers and even young adults with friends. You go down, you, you bowl. It's good memories, lots of fun, people laughing. And it's it's great. So um, buying a house recently or property, I see home keys, not like a car, keys to a car. And he doesn't know anything about that. Jim doesn't know anything about that. Recently, I, I is somebody buying a house recently? Again, recently, what does that mean? In the last month, six months, a year, three years? What would that mean? It means whatever the sitter wants it to mean to make it hit. So if the sitter had said, yes, we bought a house three years ago, then the medium would say, ah, that's what you're talking about. Yes, that is recently. You see, see, it could have been six months ago and it'd still be recently. It could be five years ago and it would still be recently. It only matters to the person who's getting the reading. And another way it would hit is if um, you were thinking of buying a house or you were just looking at real estate ads or you're thinking of getting a second home or a lake property or whatever. Um, those are all hits if the sitter wants it to be a hit. It's it's a general statement that is thrown out by the medium. And because the sitter is so motivated, they're trying to make it make it hit. Um, wants people to take care of their health for him and his brother. Really, it, he was aiming at him and his brother. And if the father died of heart attack and the man sitting in the car isn't you can tell he has some girth about his stomach area and his heart area. You can't really see it very well in the video, but those are concerns. Um, uh, number one killer of uh, males in the West is heart disease. So 
yeah, it's it's a common thing to throw out there. If this guy had been having some problems with his heart or had been concerned about his heart, um, then it would have been a bigger hit. And he would have been like, oh my gosh, yes, my doctor wants me to get more exercise and I, I'm on a cholesterol drug right now and, you know, and I need to lose weight, my doctor says. So if it's, it's a general statement being thrown out there for um, these two, this, this Jim and his brother, not the other brother, there's another brother out there that we're not worried about him. He's off visiting his, his uh, son out of town. Uh, celebrate in January. Is there something coming up in coming up soon to celebrate in January? And he says his birthday and his mom's birthday are both in January. And that's again, that's another sign of a motivated sitter. They're trying to make something out of that. Now, celebrate in January. Well, what could that possibly be? You've got um, only 12 months in a year and you've got a large family somebody's birthday or a anniversary or a wet, you know, or somebody's getting married soon or something else is happening to celebrate in January. That's not uncommon, especially since January has 31 days in it. See how that works. So some mediums play the odds and then we're likely to pick January, March, you know, that a game that you play in your knuckles. January, January, the big knuckle. February, the little one has less numbers in it. March, April has 30 days. May has 31. June has 30 days. July has 31. Over to the next knuckle, which is August, has 31. September, 30. October has 31. November has 30. December has 31. It's I don't know if you've ever played that game, but it actually helps me remember. But January is one of those months that has 31 days in it. And so everybody watching this right now is like, oh, wow, I didn't know how. I, wow, I've never seen that before. That Susan Gerbic is quite odd. <laughs> yeah, I am quite odd. But um, anyway, if it helps you remember, remember you're going from this this hand, which is my left. And then you go over here because you got to have your knuckles. So July and August have to be on the 31 days. Anyway. <laughs> so is mom alive? Why do you have to ask mom if mom is alive? Aren't you the medium? Can't you tell if mom's alive? You're in touch with the dad. And I like this part about, he says, um, you need to bring mom more into the family. Bring mom into the family more. Really? Mom is the mother of these three boys, at least. We don't know if there's more. So uh, bring her into the family more. I'm sure she'll appreciate that that little line if, if he says, hey, mom, I just had a conversation with a medium who contacted dad. And he said, dad says that you need to come and watch us bowl because we want you to be more a part. He wants you to be more a part of the family. <laughs> She's probably going to be like, uh, no, I have watched your dad and his brother bowl so much and I'm sick of it. I can't stand it. The sound of the bowling is no, I have other things to do, you know, <laughs> or maybe she's going to want to start going bowling with them. I don't know. Uh, so I thought that was funny. Dad worked really hard. Okay, so these are all platitudes. And you worked hard too. And 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 so on. Just things that you want to be true. Thanks for taking care of his wife. And then she paused and said, your mother. That was really an uh, interesting tell. Now, I wasn't looking at the screen at the moment. And, I, and it's blurred anyway. But wonder if the feedback she was getting from his body language was she wasn't quite sure if dad had remarried and that the 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 husband and wife were separated. Jim's mom and Jim's dad were separated. She might have been getting that feedback. And that's why she said that, um, where was the part? Um, bring mom into the family more. And that um, is mom passed on also. 
And it just, I think maybe there might have been something that Cheryl wasn't quite sure about. And that's why she said, thanks for taking care of his wife. So if his wife and was somebody who was living and it's the second wife, then, and he was divorced from his first wife, because, you know, face it, lots of people get divorced. What is it, 50%? And so then she kind of added, and your, um, your mom. So that was, that was odd. And then here comes Suzanne, who always has to have her two cents in here. And you'll see her do her two cents on everything. Band-Aids are on thumbs when you're bull. And she knows this because of her sister. So that was pretty interesting, huh? Do you think that's, that Cheryl got really anything right? Considering she started out with an, an older man and bowling. And then here's this guy in the audience who self-selects himself. He says, ah, I have an older man who loved bowling. So he's already picked up on that. The other things, the Band-Aids and the Nancy and um, didn't hit him. And that it was supposed to be his dad, no, I mean, his brother, not his, his dad. So really interesting how most of it was just gibberish cold reading tropes and that Jim, the motivated sitter, made it fit. He's the one who's who's uh, enabling this reading. And Cheryl is just throwing out general statements and course correcting as she needs to go and just saying general things and platitudes about your dad being a hard worker and 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 uh, worked for everything and you're just like him. You know, all this other stuff she didn't say dad's name i mean what is missing i always ask that question what is missing dad's name the brother's names the mother's name where they live or anything specific at all we don't know what state he's in we don't know where he went to school we don't know anything um we um she went with the bowling trophies which is just like okay so he's bowling and he's bowls all the time and it means a lot to him um but and having awards wouldn't be unusual what else is missing well how long dad has died how long has it been who else is there some guys his brothers are with them and they're hanging out and they're getting along really great and nancy Maybe Nancy will show up in one of the other readings. And if so, I can be sure to tell you that Cheryl and, and Suzanne will seize on that and say, oh, here's Nancy. She was just coming through on Jim's reading, but actually here she is in this reading. So it always gets mixed up and everything. And yeah, I don't think about it too much because, you know, we don't want to think about it too much. But here's Nancy. I wouldn't be surprised if Nancy makes her show. All right. So what did I miss? What what are your thoughts? Please leave me comments. I really appreciate it. I love reading your comments. Please give me um, feedback. I, I like to hear that as well. Um, and uh, let's go through the rest of these readings. So I should have five more to do. It's Christmas Eve. It's almost eight o'clock. I'm sure we could get through these before Santa gets here tonight in my house. My cats are all sound asleep. So... I, I'm waiting for Santa. <laughs>